welcome to this service of virtual Christian worship. My name is Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. On behalf of everyone in our church family, our church board, the session, our board of deacons, and everyone in the congregation, I want to welcome you uh, to worship with us. I imagine there are some new faces on the other side of the screen, and I look forward to meeting you as conditions permit. The scriptures say that where two or more are gathered, Christ is present. So let us trust that God is in the house and the spirit rests upon each of us as we worship God. Please now, uh, before we enter our uh, time of worship, uh, we're going to have a minute for mission. Our congregation supports six local mission partners through our giving to God through Wabash Avenue. Uh, we'll be hearing a short video, a minute for mission from one of them. Our stewardship committee asks all of us to keep our giving the same in 2021 as we have in 2020. Since suspending the office manager uh, position, we want to give more to local mission and this video will describe how a portion of our giving to God through Wabash Avenue blesses our local neighbors. So uh, a pledge card has been sent to everyone in the church family. If you would please return that by November 20 to Bill Domel, there are instructions on the pledge card on how to do that. Thank you for giving generously. Hello, I'm Kay Manette. I'm the nurse practitioner and executive director at the Montgomery County Free Clinic here in Crawfordsville, Indiana. This organization has existed since August 2013 and was built upon the fabulous work of many of our foremothers who in 1968 started the Christian Nursing Service and Meals on Wheels program. These programs have been expanded now and include medical and dental care provided at the Dr. Mary Ludwig Free Clinic located on Mill Street. In this beautiful facility, we see patients either in person or by telehealth for primary medical and dental care. We focus on prevention and lifestyle and medication management and giving encouragement and hope and empowerment to all our patients to make a better life. New this year has been expansion of services through a patient emergency fund and the DeMel Extended Services Fund. These funds allow us to help our patients who are needing just a little extra to get through because of the hard times we're facing with the pandemic and also to access um, specialty providers who may not be able to be um, taken care of through our clinic walls. These include services such as dental extractions, partial dentures, sleep apnea testing, CPAP machines, just to name a few. You are making a difference when you donate to the clinic. You're giving hope and health to a lot of residents of Montgomery County who for whatever reason are unable to access medical insurance. Our patients meet the criteria of being residents of Montgomery County and making 300% or less than the federal poverty level. In addition, beginning in 2020, Dr. Rucker has started seeing veterans, disabled veterans, who do not have dental insurance and also meet those income requirements. Additionally, because dental care is not provided in our schools this year, she is seeing children of our active patients for dental care if needed. The clinic is only one part of the free clinic. We also provide Meals on Wheels. In a partnership with the local hospital and an army of volunteers, we provide meals to over 60 homebound seniors or disabled persons around Crawfordsville. Most of our clients are able to pay for their meals. However, because of generous donors, we are also able to provide assistance to those who cannot afford the $5 a day for two meals. Lastly, our organization is the umbrella for Faith Alliance. 
This was a group that started years ago to support women with breast cancer. Currently, the Faith Alliance funds are used primarily to pay for screening and diagnostic mammograms for our patients, as well as all people in Montgomery County who do not have insurance coverages for those very important services. We love our patients. We love our volunteers. We are a family and we provide a lot of support and hope to each other um, and everyone who walks through this door. We'd love to give you a tour. We'd love to have you start volunteering with us. And we'd love for you to partner with us through your donations if you are able. If you ever have any other questions about any of the services provided by the Montgomery County Free Clinic, we'd love to talk with you. You can call us at 362-3244 or contact us through Facebook or our website. Our website is being updated. We've expanded our hours, so we're here five days a week, and we'd love to get to meet you and talk with you more. Thank you for considering this very important service that makes all of Montgomery County healthier and more hopeful. Stay safe and well. God Please join me in our call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music, celebrate God's presence and sing. How good it is to sing praise and give honor to God. Our God renews the earth and renews us. Wandering ones are gathered together. The brokenhearted are healed. The hungry are fed. Prisoners are freed. The blind are given sight and the lonely are befriended. How good it is to sing praise and give honor to God. All of nature sings of God's goodness. Clouds, rain, grass, all creatures great and small. God creates and sustains our world and us in love. Our opening hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fights Swick. has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the to confession. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For the God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, you sent Christ to seek and save the lost. 
we confess that we have turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride, for we see ourselves pure when we are stained and great when we are small. We have failed to love, neglected to do what is right, and ignored your truth. O oh God, have mercy on us and forgive us. Strengthen us to serve you in all that we do and in all that we are. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue now to confess our sin in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news. God offers forgiveness of our sins and the grace of repentance. Accept God's grace. Repent of your sin and be restored to abundant life. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. God of courage, be in our speaking. Be also in our listening and speak to our soul's deep understanding. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen now for a word from the Lord from Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 14. For it is as if I, a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents, and see, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. 
As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Matthew's message is reminiscent of John of Patmos' message to the church in Laodicea, rooted in Revelation chapter 3. I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. This familiar message was taken even further by Dante in the 14th century in his condemnation of those who live life with neither blame nor praise. So this message is clear, if not overstated, in all three cases. To take the easy road, to be lukewarm, never to take a stand, really is not to live at all. But I believe there's another layer, perhaps a necessary prerequisite to smart investing and bold living, that we gain from this story. Trust. I think about the classic Indiana movie, Hoosiers. I highlight this movie not only because I'm preaching today in the birthplace of basketball, but also because I love the sport and grew up on Team Jimmy. So in the last game, tensions are high. The score is tied with just seconds left. Hoosiers steal the ball and call a timeout. Coach Dale hesitates to make the play, giving the ball to Jimmy, because he knows South Bend will expect it. But the team knows it has to be Jimmy. Jimmy knows it has to be Jimmy. They trust him. And Coach Dale trusts them. So it's that trust that gets them the championship title. Trust is the missing layer that speaks volumes for the wicked servant's lack of returns, as well as the master's now shorthanded staff. Many of us would agree that faithful service is not rightly done in fear of a harsh boss, nor is it done in hopes of a future reward. It is clear that the wicked servant knew the reputation of his master. He knew he was a harsh man who takes advantage of others. And that was proven true, especially by the master's horrible responses to this servant's distress. Thankfully, we uphold a system of belief in which the faithful serve out of awe and gratitude. We do not have to live out of fear or earn our salvation. God gives benefits out of sheer grace. For this reason, the boss in this story and God cannot be the same person. The statements of, for all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. That has no way of aligning with the last will be first and the first will be last, or blessed are the poor, as well as blessed are the poor in spirit. This cannot be God. Our God is not a harsh God. God is not an unethical landlord who steals the crops that others have planted. God is not a ruthless master who takes away from the poor and gives to the rich. God does not say to those who have more will be given. Rather, God blesses the poor and the meek. So on the surface, the passage commonly known as the parable of the talents looks to support a Bible beating, fire and brimstone, fear of the Lord or face damnation kind of theology. A tale of an angry God waiting to punish the faithless person. Our deeper look reveals a truer and far richer meaning and a picture of God. More graceful, gracious, than angry and vengeful. 
It is that grace that empowers us to take risk. Now, my normal instinct here is to list the ways that the Holy Spirit may be moving in you to take a risk and make a difference. However, I have a feeling some of you may already know what that is. That idea that's been sitting in the back of your mind. The dream that you haven't yet spoken out loud. Or the feeling deep in your gut that something could be better only if... Others of you might be called to a time of listening. Trusting that God does in fact speak and God does in fact use each and every one of us in beautifully intentional ways. But no matter where you find yourself on that spectrum, hear the good news. You can trust in God. And you are called to use that trust to fuel things you never thought possible. Consider how this parable would have ended if the slave felt comfortable in clarifying the master's expectations when the money was distributed. Or if the master had given the slave a second chance to take the money and see what returns he could get without letting his anxiety get in the way. Or what if the other slaves stood up for their colleague, pointing out that the money was not lost? Consider if Jimmy hadn't spoken up to say, I'll make the shot. So what might we gain if we trust in God? What could happen if we live out our faith in trust rather than in fear? What risks can we take having confidence in God's grace? Avoiding risk out of fear gets us nowhere. We're left with empty pockets, lonely hearts, and stale faith. But engaging risk with trust opens the door to unimaginable possibilities. The church itself could not have been established without a community coming together, believing in the promises of God to the point of risking their lives for it, and committing to sharing this good news. I believe God is working through you, all of you. Our task is now to hear the call take the risk, and trust our Creator. Amen. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for gathering us together to worship you. We come, O oh Lord, to offer you our praise and to intercede for our world, our nation, our community, and for individuals. O oh Lord, we continue to pray for your blessings and help uh, during this pandemic. Continue to bless and guide our President Donald, our Governor Eric, and our Mayor Todd, and bless all who are in positions of authority that they may continue to lead us all out of this pandemic. Help us to do what we can do to protect ourselves and to protect others and to stem the spread of this disease. We pray your protection upon all frontline and essential workers. We pray that you would speed the day when a cure and a vaccine are found and this uh, specter of this disease is gone forever. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for healing. We ask your blessings upon all the men and women whom we have elected, we pray that you will bless them and that you will help them advance the common good. We pray, Lord, for our community. We ask, O oh Lord, for you to help us be a community of welcome and hosp hospitality and uh, grace and love. We pray for individuals, O oh Lord, asking your grace this day upon Alger, Autumn, Lloyd, Mandy and her family, Patricia, Nancy, Kevin, and Laura, Lily's friend Dakota, Kyle and Brittany and their family, upon John's, John, who is Bill's friend, upon Jim and Rob, upon Jim and Becky, 
bless, we pray, Nanette, Helen Milligan's family, Nancy and Doug, Roger and his family. Pour out your grace upon Betty and Dick, upon Marty, upon Nick and Bridget and their family. Bless, we pray, Bill and Linda, Jim and Virginia, Betty, we ask your grace to be poured out upon Don and Dottie and their family, upon Peg, Alan, John, Barb and Pam, and upon Lindsay, Brendan, and Jordan. And Lord, we would ask your blessings to be poured out uh, upon these persons and concerns that we now name silently before you. O oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will go out with joy in the spirit. We will go out with God. We will go out with joy in the spirit. We will go out with God. Alleluia. We will go out with joy. Alleluia, alleluia. Now anyone who's born of the Spirit, sing a new song of joy. Now anyone who's born of the Spirit, sing a new song of joy. Alleluia, we will go up with joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. We will go out with joy and spirit. We will go out with God. We will go out with joy and spirit. We will go out with God. Alleluia. We will go out with joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. May we go from this space willing to trust in God and take risks for the sake of the gospel, knowing that the love of Christ, the grace of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit is with us now and always. Amen.